Good afternoon, everyone. This is Jared Rand. Welcome to the Global Guided Meditation Call for Monday, August 19, 2024. A little after 3.15 p.m. Eastern. We'll be having a Time for Change call this Wednesday night at around... 9.15, a little after 9.15 p.m. Eastern. We're going to talk about a, what the distraction is, is, is going on on this planet and what's really truthfully happening beyond the sight of the distraction. Have a little audio issues lately, and we'll see if we can correct them today. Neville Goddard had a good statement, quote, Man's chief delusion is his conviction that there are causes other than his own state of consciousness. All that befalls any of us, all that is done, by any of us, all that consciousness is, all that we think and desire and love, all that we believe is true and we consent to. That's why a change of consciousness is necessary before you can change your outer world. And this, this should be talked about everywhere. I believe that eventually it will. Is that we have this, this training and programming for ages and ages and ages where when we get into these bodies and the body takes over because we believe that we're not connected to the source. So we begin with, now imagine, you don't, for the most part, realize that everything in your life is created by you. Now, of course, we, we've been in this illusion of separation for a very long time. But, you know, it's like anything. If you, when you condition someone, for a very long time, and you educate them and program them in a certain way, then their belief, that what, how they believe from that programming, is what's going to create their life. Now, if you're pushed into a, uh, a scenario or situation where you're told that you're not powerful and you know, the God is well outside of you and, and you should pray to the God above you. And that uh, you can't heal yourself and you can't do all these miraculous things because you're just not powerful. Right? And that when you die, you die. All these things uh, take their toll on our belief mechanism. So we are omnipotently powerful supreme beings that never die. You imagine these bodies, which is a heck of a vehicle for us to do things. But how many people do you believe right in this very now moment on this planet would believe, without a doubt, that they create every smidgen of their life? day by day, hour by hour, minute by minute, second by second. So, it, see, we have no enemies. We don't. We create them so that then we do. But in all truth and reality of who and what we are, we don't have any enemies, and we are always protected. Okay? It's when we... Concept, we focus on things. And it doesn't even mean that we're consciously aware of focusing on something. 
When you believe that you are not powerful, that you are powerless, due to the society, which is the human psyche of this planet, which really needs a checkup from the neck up. So when we get this into a practicing mode where we're doing it all the time, how in the heck are we going to be able to differentiate between our reality and our illusion? Well, the reality is the God that we are in these bodies. It's the only thing that's real. The rest of it's all an illusion. Created by us so that we can experience physical material life. Why is it that the majority of us on this planet don't embrace that and then are able to say, okay, so now I can create anything I choose. And when they say it, you know that they're not fudging or doubting or waffling. They are exact on what they want. And this is not ego mind. This is, this is heart mind. They're not full of arrogance and self-worth. They are full of love, kindness, generosity, and humbleness. They just know that they've learned that you don't have to go chase stuff. It'll come to you. Most of the time we have stuff come to us that we, we negate it because we have doubt and fear and anxieties and everything that go along with this physical material life in which the ego mind is our master. But you can look at your life right now, not from a judgmental standpoint, but from a watcher standpoint. You learn. You can look at your life, sit in silence, look at your life between the time you can remember, you know, birthing and then, you know, growing up, but you're watching, remember, you're not in it emotionally. You're just watching it as things go by. And then you just start to realize that, you know, I have created my life and everything in it. No one else has. No one can. Only you can. A lot of us will look at the fact that because we just, we don't comprehend certain things because of our programming. So we'll look at it and say, Oh, that's just coincidence. Oh, that doesn't exist. We use coincidence to explain things away that we don't understand. That's what that word's for. Now, how do we shift from that? How do we begin to realize that every single thought that we embrace creates our lives. Whatever we do, whatever we say, whatever we focus on, and this isn't meant to, well, we have to walk on eggshells through life. No. It's, it's us discovering and mastering our thoughts. There's, there's no other way to master the thoughts unless you leave the ego mind alone, where you don't think anything. You're not thinking anything. In these guided, global guided meditation calls in the silent time, we're not thinking anything. We're not. What's there to think about? You're in the now. You're not in yesterday or tomorrow or the clutches of the ego mind. You're in the now. And everything in the now is at peace. You experience peace. It's why you lean and relax into the body. You might even experience a little bliss bubbling up. And it's deciding, every one of us deciding, nobody else, it's all about you. So you decide, okay, now I've discovered that I'm the one that creates my life to this very moment. Now what I want to do is I want to master my thoughts and my ego mind. Well, how am I going to do that? Meditation. Meditation is where you can actually watch and not judge. See, meditation takes you in the heart mind, 
Judgment is in the ego mind. So you discover things about yourself and the heart mind. You can watch, view. And remember, you're not judging or critiquing or ridiculing or cutting yourself down at all. You're watching things so that you begin to comprehend that, so I am doing this over here. I see. Now I see why, you know, X, Y, Z. And then you begin to realize, well, then that's connect, that, that is connected to the ego mind. That's why I do this over I do this over here. So we, I, can, I can shift that, change that, simply by focusing on the now. How do I leave the mind alone? <laughs> A lot of people have asked that one. You leave the mind alone by leaving it alone. You leave it alone. You don't think. When in, your, when in meditation, in this meditation, and you're in total silence, right? You lean into the body and you're totally relaxed. What do you do? What do you do? You're kind of like, like I said, you're out in space. And for billions and billions of miles, there's nothing around you. You're just out in space, completely silence, completely silence. And I know that this is a challenge for many because we're not used to just being. We're used to doing, right? This is how we've been controlled and programmed and educated and trained. We're used to doing. And if we don't do, what's, what happens most of the time? We feel guilty because we're not doing. It's like, oh, I can't sit here all day meditating. I got too much to do. Now, where does that come from? It comes from the ego mind. It doesn't come from the heart mind. How do, you, how do you discover the ego mind and how it operates? By doing nothing and being in the now. See, so you're doing nothing and you're in the now. And you feel great. And you feel totally relaxed into the body. And you're not judging and you're not, you're not looking over here and Analyzing this and figuring out this. That's yesterday and tomorrow. You're in the now. That's what you are. You're in the now. This is how any of us throughout the ages master the ego mind and spend most of your time in the heart mind. Yeah, you're still going to go in the ego mind at times but nowhere near as impactful as it used to be. You could catch yourself, I'm an ego mind, not a big deal. I can go back into the heart mind. We focus on our breath rising and falling because it's a focal point. Okay? Breath is magical. We focus on that, rising and falling, the space between heartbeats. There isn't anybody on this planet or in it or above it that can truthfully say, I have mastered myself. Do you think all the other off-world species are perfectly mastered in physical form? No, they're not. If they were, they wouldn't be in physical form. So we're on this journey to master material physical life. 
not reckless abandon and flailing around every lifetime that we enter physical form. That's nonsensical. All of us are on the same path. You know, some of us believe, oh, I really messed things up. I really messed my life up. You can't. You cannot mess your life up. No matter how much you try with the ego mind, you're not going to mess your life up. Well, how is that? All the things that you believe that you've messed your life up with are things that you needed to learn from. That ain't anybody else. You. It's all in perfect order. Always has been, always will be, ever beyond and forever. It's always in perfect order. Even chaos at times is in perfect order. Now, of course, again, we're like babes in the woods. We're only scratching the surface. What happens when everything flips, so to speak, and you are the master and commander and your ego mind is your servant? What do you think happens in that scenario? When you spend a lot of your time in the now, you're focused on the now, and you're, you're watching everything else around you, so you're learning from it. And you're also mastering it, see? What do you think happens when you master your thoughts? You specifically, finitely, only choose the thoughts that you want to experience. You're able to look at them. Of course, we have unknowns on purpose so that we, oh, I'm going to have this up because I know exactly how it's going to turn out. That'd be okay for a while for any of us. But I do believe that a lot of us would just get bored to tears. It's just, well, let's see, okay, I'll do this thought, but I already know what's going to happen in this thought, so I'm not going to do that thought. And then eventually, we're bored to tears. So we create thoughts that are adventuresome and, and things in them that we know are unknowns, but we know also that there will be some challenges in there for us that we overcome. It's like someone who loses their eyesight, right? They don't know that they can have eyesight again because they don't have 100% trust, faith, and confidence in themselves. And they don't know that there are divine perfection in that body. Somebody who gets their legs blown off don't, does not know that they could regenerate them because they don't know who and what they are. We have all of this on the planet at this time because the majority of the civilization doesn't know who and what it is. Is it a bad thing? No, it's a learning process. We're always learning and experiencing that's why we create things to experience, so we can learn. But when you look at, you're watching so much. You're watching all of it. Uh, oh, this is going to happen at this time. This is going to happen over here. This just happened, and over here this happened. And it's all hogwash. It's, there, there is no reason for us to listen or watch any of it. We most likely would be spending our time in meditation focused on the now. And then sending out one of our thoughts to the universe on, on what we want. In detail. You've got to do it in detail. See, if you do it sloppy, you're going to get sloppy. That's why you've got to do it in detail. You've got to make sure that all the I's are dotted, T's are crossed whenever you ask for something the universe. Now, you know you're going to get it. You know, you've got 100% confidence, trust, and faith in yourself in this universe. So it isn't a question of, well, maybe I'll get it, or what if I don't get it? And you're, you're, the understanding is, hey, 
I don't get it fine. I get it fine. Both are fine. They're great. Okay. That's surrendering and that's letting go. That statement right there that you do with your heart mind, that's letting go. You're, you're, you're not focused on it. You're not fixated on it. You haven't formed um, outcomes, attachments to the outcomes, and you have no expectations. You just know. And that's it. You know, say, well, when's this? When's that? When this? You just know it, it, it will occur. It's going to manifest. Most of us don't have much patience because of this rat race that we're in. You know, it's constantly hurry, 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 rush, 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 rush. You ever notice that? You ever get around a bunch of people, do you feel hurried at times? Now, you may not be. You, you might be in your own space, but it, it kind of feels, you know, when people are hurrying, you, you know what I mean, I think we've all been there more than once, don't you get a little kind of unhealed a little? It, it kind of irritates you. It, it, you just don't care for that frequency, the hurry, 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 rush, 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 rush. Get it done, get it done, get it done. And then you do all that, and, then, and there's a bunch more that comes in. It's just like it's never ending. It's just always being manufactured by the ego mind. Well, this, this is great, but I want better. And I hope I'm going to go over here and get better. This is better, but I want even better. That's ego mind. It's like we have wars and conflicts. and You know, people shoot each other for the most ridiculous things to end the body. Why is that? Well, ego mind is security. You know, you're, you're looking at a planetary population that is right now, it's in transition, but the majority are in a bicameral right-left brain belief mechanism system. And most of them, just about you know, the majority of people on the planet live in the ego mind. When you have to justify something, prove something, right? That's ego mind. Heart mind, you don't have any motivation to prove. Prove yourself, right? Explain. explain. Justify yourself. All ego mind. Well, one might say, well, aren't we supposed to just, you know, kind of mix it up in this life or in every lifetime? We do. We do mix it up. Uh, do you honestly believe that every one of our lifetimes we were all benevolent, non-abrasive? This is why I, I caution people that when the time comes for them to have total clarity of all past lives, be careful for what you wish for. Because if you aren't in spiritual uh, comprehension, and you are, you're not uh, mastering the ego mind in your thoughts, it's going to be a very difficult, probably the most difficult exposure and experience you've had to date. Okay? You can't put the cart before the horse. Hurry, hurry, hurry. I've talked to so many people that want to know all their past lives immediately. They want to know them now. They want to know them all. They don't, you know, I don't care if, if I was, uh, you know, in one life or whatever lives, I was not a, a, a wonderful being, that I did some things. Remember, yin and yang, we, we experience it all and then some, lifetime after lifetime. And these bodies are a magnificent machine that we have the opportunity to inhabit. But I've talked about that everything that any of us will ever need
we have. Already, every one of us has it. So we have these moments where we will shift, right? We shift, shift our direction. Yeah, we might view something totally different than we would normally view. Or we look at others. You could, yeah, you know, it's like you could sit at a bus station or an airport, right, and just kind of sit and watch people. People watch it. How many of us do you believe could do that in this now moment without judgment? Be interesting, wouldn't it? I mean, we're all so fascinating, aren't we? We have, we, I mean, we're just so fascinating to watch each other. You learn that way too. I know people that, that for, for like vacation, they go to the airport and sit and watch. Of course, they can't go through the checkout and all that stuff, but I'm talking about the times when we didn't have all of that darkness. Well, you just sit and watch. Just go to a bus station, sit and watch people. At a park, you know, active park, you go and sit and watch people. Watch dogs, people. We're very visual with these bodies. We, we are visual beings. We like to see things and interact with them. If we can't see them, then our other senses come online more. But see, it's interesting. You can see with your heart. You don't necessarily need to see with your eyes. If you can't see out of the eyes, then you see out of the heart. Not the head. The ego mind is there for us for one reason, one reason only. We created it so we can master it, which means that then we learn and experience. You'll know as you move forward more and more where you will begin to realize that you don't, you're not concerned about people. As far as them thinking about you, saying things about you, viewing you in any way, shape, form. You're, you're not there with that anymore. It isn't something that you focus on. It's not something that you pay attention to at all. What are you paying attention to? You. The God within you. All the facets and aspects of you. That's what you're doing. Why are you doing that? Because you want to learn. You want to experience the true source of your existence. It isn't the body. I know everybody on this Global Guided Meditation call know that. Period. It isn't your name. Billy Johnson, that's not you. <laughs> we know that. We know all that stuff just labels given to us. It's like on this planet, your last name isn't your last name. It was given to you. It's not yours. Well, this is my last name. No, it's not. It was given to you. You can pick your own last name. In fact, why do you need a last name? It's like I've met people that don't have a name. Now, to most of us, that would be kind of crazy, wouldn't it? What's your name? I don't have a name. What? You don't, what do you mean you don't have a name? I don't have a name. Oh. Okay. How would you get no name's attention? Yeah. Maybe touch them, you know. 
or get you know wave in front of their face or something, or hey you. <laughs> but there are people that don't they don't have names. The names are well, I don't know maybe call them labels or something. We're so used to having names, right? We name everything. You ever notice that you have something and you you want to give it a name? So you give it a name. Is, it, is, that, is there anything wrong with any of that? No. Kind of funny. You know, we get a good laugh uh, at ourselves. Is it? And then we may you may ask yourself that what am I really doing here then? What? Why in the heck am I here? What the? Why? What? So I can experience this. Forget everything. Come back again and do it again, over and over again. No. Right now, we don't have a lot of time in these bodies. We all know that. Fleeting. We have no guarantees that we'll wake up tomorrow morning or that an hour from now we won't be in the body. But what do we do? Well... Before you leave that body, the goal is is to know know exactly who and what you are, and to have mastered the ego mind and your thoughts. Then it's a new earth. Then a new world, a new existence, because you're no longer physical material; you're spiritual. Only passions, great passions, can elevate the soul to great things. Dennis Degra. We create our lives. Every smidgen of them, even the things that we aren't even aware we're creating. All our problems are created between our ears. And to go even deeper, Ron Arishi once said, all your problems stem from the belief that you were born. Okay? How the heck can we be born? You, all of us, are an eternal being that cannot die. So truly, you were never born. All attachment to this body, this mind, these beliefs, that you were born imply that you are separate from your spiritual source. Of course you're not. To step into the all-powerful manifesting beings... We truly are. We simply surrender all false ideas and be one with this source. And as we devote ourselves to knowing ourselves as the divine, all-powerful, manifesting beings that we truly are, we will see that anything is possible. I join you in meditation. I'll return to close us out.
Take an easy and slow breath in through the nose. And an easy and slow breath out from the mouth. Remain still. Relaxed into the body. Focused on the breath. Rising and falling. What if, 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 what if everyone you believed to be evil in this world was actually an undercover agent working for the light? And what if the main plan for your life was to learn how to become an infinitely flowing river of lightness, compassion, and gratitude? Sometimes the best secrets are so well hidden from our eyes that we have to give up all our core beliefs to see them. How would you feel about life tomorrow morning if this thought was a real truth? There's something a bit deeper to talk about tonight than the food you're going to eat. As this life is the greatest game there is, no game can even compare to it. The winners are those who fear the least, love the most, and don't take anything too seriously. And remember, everybody loves you in heaven. You are the greatest treasure. Even after you have received all the fame, fortune, and glory that you have been seeking for lifetimes, your ego will still try to continue its habitual search for more, more, more. Why are you still looking for riches outside yourself when you are the greatest, most precious gold mine in this entire universe? You are. The magic inside you is worth infinite treasures. So embrace this sacred truth. Allow yourself to discover the greatest treasures in this life are never outside of your body, but deep within your innermost core. If you cannot find it, then just keep digging. Just keep digging. Just keep digging. Dig so deep inside you that you find the very essence of before you were given a name. I predict that very, very, very soon that you will strike it rich. I've always been impressed by those, by your willingness to learn. Take this with you for the rest of the day into the evening and night and the following morning. We'll return here Tuesday, August 20. 2024, we'll have to 3.15 p.m. Eastern to continue our global guided meditation call. Be gentle, kind, generous, and humble with yourself at all times. Be in the highest of the highest high, deepest of the deepest, deepest, purest of the purest, purest, eternal gratitude at all times, no matter what's happening outside of you or inside of you. Open your heart. Allow the magic to flow in.